This next guest is one of my favorite guys, friend of the show, former New York Giant, my man David Deal. What's going on, partner? Great to see you guys, and I got the memo on the black polo, so we're good. <laughs> Listen, I heard, you know what I mean? We're trying to go to the club after this. No hats, oh my no gosh. boots. I'm just trying to make sure I'm good with hey, you. Starting you good, Monday off right. Starting the Monday off right, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, obviously, after it seems like forever, the NFL draft is finally, finally here this Thursday. You've participated in the NFL draft. I would love to know what was your experiences going into that time before your name was finally called? You know, obviously, there's a lot of nervous energy because this is the first time in your life that you're going to be chosen and you don't get to choose your destination. So the first thing that you're open for is that number one, you get drafted. And number two, that you get drafted to a place that has a great coaching staff that are going to help you continue to hone in on the techniques and fundamentals that fit your skill set, not to mention a scheme fit. A lot of times when people sit here and they go through the draft, they're just throwing names at the board. Oh, he's a wide receiver, always oh, a linebacker. But what is he a wide receiver and how does he fit into that offense? particularly where he's going to get drafted. So that's why right now it's not so much always about the number of where you get drafted. It's about where you get drafted and how they produce you once you get there. All right, Deal. So that took us a little bit down memory lane back to 2003 when you were selected in the fifth round. But also you pressed it forward a little bit, keeping it real in terms of Literally, draft day and draft weekend in the NFL only reps, represents the beginning of these guys' careers. But let's put you in the GM spot or even the head coach spot, as we've heard that Joe Judge is going to have his hand all over the Giants pick at 11. What do you want to see there? You know, for me, with all the additions that this Giants football team has made through free agency, the first thing that I would go to is the defensive side of the ball and continue to add to Patrick Graham's defense. If you can get another corner to play opposite uh, of James Bradbury and the addition of Adore Jackson through free agency. It allows you flexibility in what you want to play zone and in man. And then on the back end with Julian Love, Peppers coming back and Xavier McKinney coming into his full season after missing so many games in his rookie year. That is what's going to allow them to play on the back end. So many things that where they're going to show you a zone pre-snap and then they're going to play man post-snap. And then the next thing I would go to is uh, edge rusher. We all know that with Dexter Lawrence on the inside, with Leonard Williams, if they could get that one piece to the outside, now it's going to make offensive coordinators struggle. Okay, do we chip through the beat gaps with our running backs? Now we're going to have to keep our tight ends in to chip on the edges for another premier pass rusher. And once again, they always say the best pass rush is a coverage and the best coverage is a pass rush. So if they can marry those two things together with that 11 pick, I think that's where this team will really pick up stride where they left off last year. I have forgotten, Kaz, how thorough one David Deal is. I, However, I I, correct me if I'm wrong, Kaz, I don't think I heard a name there. Did you hear a name? I heard a name. I think I heard a name. I don't know. Did you? I heard a Bradbury. I heard a Bradbury. But speaking of names, speaking of names, we're at that part of the draft okay. where it's not even about – what you're good at, it's about what you're not good at. It's, it's all about taking taking you down a peg. <laughs> and right now, the name that's right been now. around the giant circles is Rashawn Slater. And everyone's talking about his arms are too little and all that. It, it, it's weird. It's weird. Dave, have you ever heard anything like that? Are, are, is arm length really a thing for the NFL draft? Without a doubt, especially when you're playing offensive tackle, because the whole thing that you're trying to do at offensive tackle is – not give that defensive end any framework to hit and you're trying to punch restart and redirect the defensive end so if you think going back to the super bowl my former teammate and who i won a super bowl with jpp go go gadget arms it's not always just speed and bending around the edge it's that one arm stab to power and if you don't have long arms you're not going to be able to lock out that defensive end who's already got inside leverage so it does make a difference when you are playing off at the tackle but where Rashawn Slater makes up in it is his hand placement and his timing of his punch. When you're accurate with your hands and you can punch independently with both of your hands and hit different targets on, an, uh, on a defensive end, let alone his footwork and his quick speed of his pass sets that look the best out of all the tackles coming out, that's what allows you to overcome not having that arm length like Penny Sewell. 
Kaz, did you get all that down? Because we're gonna go and put you out on the I'm football field. I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. Just, I mean, he's we very. Want to see your he's extremely thorough. So I'm like, all right, long arms. Got uh, okay, deal. You gotta give me the name that you would pick at 11 before this interview ends. But we're not gonna do that right this second. I do want to talk about what's currently there with the Giants. Kenny Galladay, the big signing in the off season. Sa- Saquon Barkley will be healthy. The Giants took a lineman yeah. last year in the draft. This is kind of a do or die year for Daniel Jones. Is he in a position to take the next it step? Is. What do you need to see from him? Well, obviously, they surrounded him with all the pieces needed in order for him to have a successful season and campaign in 2021. You think about the addition of Kyle Rudolph, Kenny Galladay on the outside, John Ross, a speedy vertical threat down the field, Saquon Barkley coming back healthy, and the continued evolution of this offensive line. This is now where it's on Daniel Jones to perform and to knock out the inconsistencies that he did have in 2020 because now he's going into a year, second year of his offense where he didn't have an offseason last year. None of those excuses are going to be there for the Giants and for Daniel Jones in 2020. So it's going to come down to all of his film work and the way that he plays, not about what's said about him. Now, Daniel, uh, okay. uh, Dave, my fault. We, we, uh, I was thinking of Daniel Jones, <laughs> called you Dave, by whatever. Anyway, your boy, Tom Brady, uh, made some news last week. I thought he was joking around, but apparently he's dead serious. He was getting his Karen on, talking about, I want to speak to the manager about this jersey rule change, especially with defensive players. They want to get like single numbers. And now he's talking about it's going to be some bad football. It's going to be terrible to watch all this other stuff. Is, does Brady have a point or is he just being a little, uh, old? man get off my lawn type of guy I, I think he's being a little bit of old man get off of my lawn a little bit of a geezer <laughs> here but if you were going to complain about anything it would be the fact that they didn't allow nfl teams to have an alternate helmet which allow you to have alternate jerseys nobody really cares about the numbers i don't think it's that big of a deal you know when you're sitting here looking at defense bands or if they're number six or 94 that's not going to make a difference whatsoever. So I think this was just something with him, with the history and tradition of the game. Yeah, it's something that you want to keep stable. But at the same time, you know, when you're in college, when you see players in high school playing defensive end and they're number six, number two, looks kind of sweet now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, Dio, we got a game for you. Cass is going to take you through rapid fire. But before he starts the game question, okay. my rapid fire question that I told you I wasn't going to let you forget, <laughs> just give me the name that you want to see. If you got your way at the 11th pick, whoever you want may have dropped, have been available. Who do you want to see for the Giants? If, if it, I was there to choose, I would I would choose Aziz Ojolari out of Georgia, the defensive end. Okay. I, I just think when I watch him on film, his get off, his first step, remind me so much of OCU Minora, but the thing that he has so much more is his flexibility, his ability to bend the edge. He's very violent with his hands and converts speed to power. The things that he needs to continue to improve on is the secondary pass rush and getting an offensive tackle upfield and then working an inside move. But he has everything that you're looking for out of a defensive end. So for me, if I was to choose at number 11, that's who I would pick. All right, Mr. All right. Deal, I want you to go against your natural instincts and do not give us a great thorough Quick. answer. Quick, Quick, one word, rapid fire, let's right. get it. First Super Bowl win or second? Second. All right, you were otherwise engaged, so you didn't see David Tyree's catch. What did you think when you saw it on the sidelines? Holy crap, he just caught it off of his helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I once played with a broken fill in the blank. Finger. Ooh. Welcome to the club. Ooh. Uh, Hendrix or Van Halen? <laughs> <laughs> I can reach all the notes, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> It's a family so show. It's a family that. show. Uh, uh, most <laughs> expensive <laughs> quarterback that I mean, we've got multiples <laughs> here. We got multiple hands. Which one? Oh, oh my God. Oh. Deal. Oh. Oh. Deal. <laughs> deal. 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 Focus. Focus. Stay with me. Stay with oh, me. Stay with no. me. You've, I'm God. sure your quarterbacks have taken you to many dinners. The most expensive <laughs> one cost how much? I think it was when Eli took the entire offensive line for the weekend of the Kentucky Derby. That was the most expensive weekend in dinners. Absolutely. Nice. All right. This question is, 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 is tricky 
because it might pull your card around here. Chicago deep dish or New York style pizza? Uh oh. Deep dish, no question. I'm a, a hometown. <gasps> never forget your roots in Chicago. Don't get me wrong. I night, like a night's fold every once in a while, but you, you got to stay true to your roots. Deep dish. That wow, is not Leo. a pizza. That is a meal. If you eat it with a knife and a fork, that's not a pizza. <laughs> Last question. Every day when I wake up, my blank hurts. <laughs> Ankle. <laughs> Every All once right. I fall asleep in the way that my leg, my ankle. I, you know, Jay. I'm glad because of this situation, I want you to show a mangled ankle, like a mangled right, finger. Right, please. But we're good. No. We're, good. <laughs> we're done. Deal, it was so good to see you. It's been far too long. You got to swing through more regularly as we talk Knicks playoffs. David Deal, folks, uh, two-time Super Bowl champion with the New York Giants. Coming up, we get into our award what am I trying to say, Kaz? Knickerbocker Oscars. Oscars. There you go. Oscars. There you go. 